everyone, we are Geeks Not Nerds, I'm Captain Logan! And I'm Vince! And it's time for round five of the fourth annual multi-topic extravaganza! And Vince, are you ready to answer some more questions? I am! We have you? a bunch more questions to go through, I don't really know how many more videos we're gonna do, at least a couple, and we're gonna jump straight into it, answering your questions, and thanks very much for them. Beginning with Batman Beyond uh, for the win, will you do a review of Young Justice? In my opinion, it's even better than Batman the Animated Series. Wow, them's fighting words. Um, <laughs> I've I, I've uh, only ever seen the pilot. I've Same heard here. wonderful things about it, though. Um, Eric says that it gets uh, really, uh, that it turns into a really wonderfully dramatic and involved uh, kind of ongoing story, and yes, I, I would like to um, eventually do some kind of video on that. As far as rewinds on TV go, uh, I have mostly done top tens. And uh, some things I'm wanting to do other sorts of things with. Um, I'm, I'll, yeah, I'll go ahead and announce this now. Here, here after a while, when I finally get finished with all of Spawn Year and I, and I finally get back to Rewind, one of the uh, first videos I'm going to do um, is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back and do an overview thing on the 87 Turtle Show. And uh, I, I'm going to do, it's going to have a top 10 episodes inside of it, but it's also going to have some other things in it because it's 10 seasons and there's a lot in it and there's a lot of things I'd like to comment on. So You should do a top 10 seasons. Top 10. <laughs> that's that's hilarious. Oh, uh, well, for number 10, I pick four. And for number nine, <laughs> I pick two. And uh, What? <laughs> you do it chronologically. That's how, and then we can do it for Smallville. <laughs> You know, there might be something in there, um, noodling that. Anyway, uh, You should do the top ten seasons of 24. Oh, I love it when silly... we got to wait for one more, and then we can do that. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I love it when hilarious notions that might come to some sort of fruition come out <laughs> on camera. Anyway, that's the answer to that. I uh, definitely want to do something on that show. Um... Have you read, this is the same guy, have you read Alan Moore's Swamp Thing? Have you ever read, read any of Alan Moore's Swamp Thing? Uh, I've, I've, I've not read done it. an issue of Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. Okay, but, uh, clearly an expert. Yep, I know everything there is to know about <laughs> a couple pages of that issue. <laughs> but uh, I've, I've considered jumping a little bit deeper into it because uh, I really like the, the Len Wein. Is that how you say his name? Yeah. Len, I really like some of that older stuff. Uh, and, uh, you know... Alan Moore seems to have some critical acclaim. I'm not sure if that's a thing that anybody else out there knows about, but he seems to have some critical acclaim. So it seems worth reading, but I've not delved into it. Yeah, that's another yet. one of those things that um, he apparently has the definitive run on. Yeah. So, oh, Alan Moore. Uh, all right. Uh, Hillo. Hillo. What, uh, <laughs> what, what is a recent superhero movie you each think is the most effective on pop culture and why? I wonder if he means... Uh, has has had the greatest impact mm. on pop culture. Um, I'm not sure what what effective on pop culture is, so um, I'm I'm going to assume that that's what that question means. What do you think, Vince? Um, the, the 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 superhero that has had the most uh, recently, the recent superhero movie that has affected pop culture the most. I would say it's probably the Avengers. I mean, I realize that's not a single superhero movie, but the one that affected that has affected things after it a little bit. Uh, what do you think it's doing so uh, far? I mean, we've only had two years after it. Like, like, like uh, most of the things that have come out since then would have already been in production when it was b before it came out. So, like, what what is what has it done? I think essentially what it's doing is it's one, it's making. Uh, of course, we did say culture, so yeah. not just <clears throat> movies. Yeah, I do think uh, DC is or Warner Brothers is becoming a, uh, a little more aware that they have stuff that they can farm here, but they're still not sure how to deal with it, and they don't want to be a copy of Marvel, so they're still twiddling their thumbs. And then you have uh, Marvel, which I think uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is indicative of uh, of that tone, and I think Marvel is now of, of the tone of the Avengers. And uh, I think Marvel is kind of embracing this, and they realize that they can have these big action popcorn movies that uh, can be a fun roller coaster ride and still be a decent and flick. So uh, I think that we're seeing some of these things echo. and uh, But we, we don't have to be so heavy yes. with, with message and whatever. Beyond that, I would, I would like to say that uh, obviously the Nolan Batman movies are extremely influential and then we can get things that are gritty and grim and can move on from there. I would say <coughs> excuse me I mean, recent, it's like, how far do we go back? But I, I, I would say that in the last 10 years, um, the, the, the single most um, influential superhero movie has been Dark Knight. Um, but I would also put Begins in, kind of in there with it, because if you look at a lot of movies 
um, that were not superhero movies that came out after Begins, in between even Begins and Dark Knight, you can see that score in all kinds of stuff. Mm. It's really interesting. The, the, just like the tone of that movie, and then of course the tone of that movie is, is in a lot of ways the tone of Dark Knight. You know what I mean? Um, like Dark, Dark Knight carved out its own thing, but it still is, is, is furthering that, and then of course it into Rises. But um, I kind of think that I that I, I want to say Dark Knight is the most influential just because it seems to have really greatly affected a lot of things outside of superhero pretty hard. And I don't know that we've really seen that happen yet with Avengers, but or and in, in, in with and with even the Marvel films on the whole so much. Um, when you look at for, for instance, um, the guy, I, his name's not jumping right at me, the guy who directed Skyfall uh, came right out and said that uh, he was greatly influenced by Nolan's Batman movies. And that, uh, and that, like a lot of the, a lot of the stuff he decided he could do in that movie, he never would have thought he could get away with before Dark Knight happened. And you know, you and I saw Skyfall, and we were, we were, we were looking at it and going, oh, here's all these, here's all these Nolan parallels. They were, they, like, like, like it wasn't peripheral. He knew about it. You know what I mean? He's gone on record and talked about it. Um, so yeah, I, I don't, I don't know that there's anything <laughs> it's more. Like, it's like Star Trek with Star Wars. Well, the movie Star Trek with Star Wars. Yeah, except that, like, this isn't so much homage and stuff as it is, it did it on purpose, you know what I mean? Like, like I mean, with, 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 with Star Trek, no, I, I, see, I see the joke you're making, but the, but the difference is, Abrams isn't going, um, well, actually, no, I guess he did kind of, kind of say, oh, yeah, I love Star Wars, so I did some Star Wars in, the, in my movie. Yeah, 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 I guess, you know. Punch it. Right. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you're kind of right about that. But, 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 but the difference is, I'm talking about, like, like 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 stuff on a grand scale that you can get away with now because of what Nolan did with Dark Knight. You know what I mean? Um, that people will accept that this guy wouldn't have thought they could accept before that. That's that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Um, let's see, what else? What else? Goku Fuido Seven One. What is a classic book that has never gotten a movie that you want to have one? Wow. Oh, I'm going to have to go with The Impossible Man. I think that should totally get a movie. I'm, I'm kidding. No, I, I don't think there should be an Impossible Man movie. Let's see here. It makes for a fun episode of a TV show. War and Peace. War and Peace. The character from Sky High. Probably a movie. War and Peace. I, I loved that. That is so funny. I like Sky uh, High quite so a lot. That's so clever. Yeah, it's, that's, that's, a really good, that's a really good one. Um, I'm going to say... Well, okay, so first of all... I'm gonna have a hard time coming up with a with, with a with a book that has never gotten a movie at all, a, a, at all. Are you talking about classic literature? But one that hasn't gotten one in a really long time, certainly hasn't gotten a big budget one in a long time, is uh, Treasure Island. Um, I would love to see a good, uh, big budget, well made, well acted Treasure Island film. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. I'm I'm straight up drawing a blank. Classic books that haven't had a movie. Well, I think I'd like to. As have you all know, a, Vince uh, doesn't read. Yeah, I, I don't know he how to. He read. doesn't know how to read. Um, I. Uh, uh, <laughs> I never learned to read. There's a reference to a movie. <laughs> I would feel worse for you if you weren't just quoting things, right? Like. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, wait, but he reads comics. How, how does he? How does this? Uh, well, what nobody knows is that uh, Vince and I actually spend a lot more of our free time together than anybody realizes, and uh, I have to read all the comics to him. So you can see the pictures, and then I have to read all the all the all the balloons. I, so I'm not every of anything that has character movie. that has ever existed in comic books, Vince thinks of my voice when he when he when he sees it's it. It's interesting, isn't that weird? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, you have no good answer. I would see. I would like to see an actual Beowulf movie. Like a, <laughs> Like a true to form Beowulf movie, one that doesn't have uh, Christopher Lambert or uh, where you know Beowulf screws the dragon. Oh, yeah, and I think it might be time or to Grendel's do mother, uh, more serious stuff on the on the big epics, right? Like like yeah. you know, I I think it's time to do another um uh, like 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 more sophisticated like Odysseus and and, and, and stuff like that. Um, because you know we go back to those sorts of things with movies like uh, uh what was the Harryhausen thing that got remade. Um, oh, recently, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, that that uh, that I that I really that I really didn't like that had um oh, what, that had what's his face as Zeus. It was um, I don't know why I cannot think. Everybody out there who's watching it this had, going, it's it called had, this. Yeah, it had Liam Neeson is as, as uh, 
um, Zeus, but, but, but anyway, um, it'll, it'll come to me, but anyway, anyway, um, but yeah, like, like, you know, you know, that stuff, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of just popcorn schlock, I think that that's, the, that, that it would be really cool to get, uh, so, some of that stuff more in the vein of the old like Jason and the Argonauts and stuff and take it a little bit more seriously. Yeah, I mean, uh, just going on that, you could use a lot of mythology and farm yeah, that. Sure, I mean, sure. uh, does it all have to be like this uh, turning mythology on its ear type of thing, or does it all have to be this uh, juvenile fiction version of mythology? I mean, uh, why does it all have to be like that crap Hercules movie that came out a number of years ago? Uh, or like the... Uh, uh, or know. the crap Hercules movie that came out a few months ago. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm not even talking about the current. I'm talking about that one. Where I haven't seen the new one yet. Uh, which, or, or what was that one? That uh, what was that Harryhausen movie? That <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know that <sighs> Clash of the Titans. Thank you, God. I, I I was I was right there with you. I almost at it. All right. Anyway, anyway. Uh, have you seen John Carter? And if yes, what was your thoughts on the movie? No, I missed it. I still haven't seen that. In fact, I, think I have I might, I could let you borrow it. I think I actually might have your copy because you let me borrow it, and I still oh. haven't watched it. Yeah, you can still watch it I, if you have that. Can copy. I, Vince? Do yeah. I have your permission to borrow the thing I to watch the thing I borrowed from you? Like a you're year right ago? ahead. Okay, all right. It's. I thought it was solid. I was think it? that uh, they misnamed the movie. I think they should have called it Warlord of Mars or yeah. Mars. Yeah, <laughs> well, that is a thing we've talked about at and, length. Uh, that they misnamed that movie. I uh, I enjoy just from a marketing standpoint. Oh yeah, I enjoy a lot of the. Uh, a lot of the quirky humor they have in it, and uh, I, I like it a lot because it feels a lot like something that's uh, very pulpy, you know, pulp novel-ish, something that's uh, dated. And uh, especially they, they, the way they bookend the movie, uh, it, it makes a lot of sense for the material that it's being drawn from. I mean, I never read the uh, read the books that it's based on, but I've read some Tarzan and things of that kind. So uh, all by the same guy. Ironically, I actually have read a little bit of John Carter myself. Oh, I just yeah. haven't seen the film yet. And I mean, I thought I thought it was good. I thought it was well acted, well cast, and the effects were good. But uh, it was, and and the plot held together. I mean, it wasn't like groundbreaking, but uh, it was neat. Um, there's, you, there's my quick thoughts. Do you on remember it. Disney's reasoning for naming it that way? I forget. They said women wouldn't see a movie with the word Mars in the title. That's re <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> I know. I'll use a word that's actual <laughs> PC on here. That's ridiculous. If that every time that comes that, that comes up in a conversation, I feel the need to throw out that tidbit, but it just bothers me. <laughs> that's uh, ridiculous. Robertson ninety seven. Uh, says, how do you, Captain Logan, keep up such a strong work ethic? I know many people who would not be able to get to 50 episodes of Spawn Year, let alone over 300. Um, I have an answer. Let me go get my whip. That <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a really nice. That's really nice of you to say. Um, it, it's it's a thing that I. It, it's a it's a funny thing to bring up because I'm kind of sitting here berating myself for not being done with Spawn Year yet, and here's a guy going, "How have you done as much as you have?" I I, I appreciate that. Um, Do you know how much caffeine is in Mountain Dew? <laughs> <laughs> There's your answer. I think. <laughs> I think with somebody like me, it, it has a lot to do with personality type. I think it's that I'm just a really driven person. Like, uh, s different sorts of things make people happy. And when I say different sorts of things, I mean different kinds of routines. I tend to, for whatever reason, not be the best me I can be if I haven't gotten anything done today. Uh, that's me. I, I I have to be productive. I have to be prolific, and uh, that's that's why I said I'm kind of braiding myself for not having gotten Spawn Year done because because a lot of people are, are, are like uh, are like well, well Captain Logan like don't beat yourself up about it like yeah you're six months behind um, and you didn't get it done in a whole year but like it was a really uh, ambitious kind of thing it was it was it was nuts that you would even have thought you could get it done in a year and I said yeah but I know I could have. You know what I mean? This is I know me, and I know that if that if that if I if I had worked a little harder, uh, if I if I had pushed a little a little hard, I I, I, I know I could have done it. Even with a suit, even with all of that. Um, and I mean, like I've got good reasons for why it's taken as long as it has. But it, but but I do, just just kind of full disclosure, I do find myself sometimes sometimes going, nah, I could have done better. Well, I mean, you know, you have to have times where you, you know, see your kid. So yeah, no, ex of course. Do yeah. things that require you to not be locked in your basement. So, or your bad cave, however you Geek Volution Studios. But the words of encouragement I would give to people that have a tendency to, pro to procrastinate and that feel like they don't get enough done is there really are more hours in the day than you think there are. You just got to manage your time wisely. I mean, that that's 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 and and when you're talking about creative stuff, 
sit down and do the work. Yeah. It is so easy for us, right, to say things like, I've got to be in a particular mood to work on this particular project, that kind of thing. Uh, you look at somebody like Stephen King and you wonder how in the world has he put out as many books as he has, and it's because he has a certain allotted time every day that he sits down and no matter what kind of mood he's in, no matter what he feels like, he does the work. Mm -hmm. And some days he gets several thousand words on a page and some days he only gets a few hundred on a page um, but you sit down and, and you do the work and you can't wait for your muse that's that's the most important thing is you can't wait for your for your muse so much of writing and creative stuff in general is in revision you got to have something in the first place so that you can then revise which yeah. has been the most complicated thing about spawn here because I don't get to revise it I have to put it out when, when my first draft is done if, if I can toot your horn for you here no you don't please don't <laughs> <laughs> that sounds dirty. So, uh, when we were in school, going right, right in school, right together, in school, yeah, that's what they call it. That's that's the way you you sound less pretentious. That's right. You talk when about we writing going to school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you don't say writing school. It's it's we were we were writing. <laughs> so uh, when we were writing things, yeah, uh, good old Cap would uh, what was it? There was at least one Our semester. Professor Jim Wrighton. <laughs> you know that guy? No, no, I, I, so, made that, I made that up. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. So. Uh, Cap was taking uh, a generally unrecommended number of writing classes all at once, and uh, I don't know if that was at least one semester or a couple semesters in a row, but uh, I think his advisor and some teachers told him, you probably shouldn't take all these classes during this one semester, and uh, his response was, no, nah, I got this covered, and uh, it wasn't even, really, maybe I shouldn't, it was, no, nah, I'm good. Oh, I'll do fine, and he did. And uh, he was pretty happy during that that period of time where he was all he was doing was writing. So, yeah. I love, yeah, I loved it. Um, I at the time I uh, am positive that I took more hours in creative writing and actual creative writing classes than anybody who had ever been to KU, um, because you only had to have fifteen hours. It's, it's ridiculous how small, or like you how know, few there are. And I took everything that was offered that at required. JUCO before I got there. I went to a junior college for two years before I went to KU, and uh, I had a really great mentor there. And I took uh, everything they offered there uh, as far as fiction writing went. I didn't take everything else. But then I got to KU, and I took everything you could take. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, some things more than once. Uh, I think I did, you know, I did fiction writing three times. I did playwriting twice. Um, I did poetry writing. I did, I did, I did screenwriting. Um, you know, did I, did I mentioned playwriting. Um, the only thing I didn't take was technical writing, because that doesn't count as a creative writing class. And I didn't do, and I didn't do the... And I didn't do the personal essay, and I was interested in the personal essay. I just n never, it never oh, landed. I didn't know that existed. Never even landed where I could get it. Yeah, because I went and I went and made sure I knew what everything was that you could take. You only need a fifteen hours. I mean, do you know how, do you know how many classes fifteen hours is? Five. Yeah, <laughs> it's nothing. Yeah, and uh, I ended up taking retaking some playwriting classes, but uh, you know that's the thing. Though, yeah, because yeah, because it was because it's fun because you liked it. Yeah, and I, the only one I didn't do was uh, oh I didn't I didn't do the English program. A screenwriting class. I did the film program screenwriting class, so it did not count. It didn't count, yeah. Which is amusing to me. They but also, also, you didn't have to write any scripts for that class. Yeah, I didn't have to complete a script. It oh, was, okay, okay. I thought there wasn't even any actual screenwriting that you did in that class, which seemed weird to me. No, you walk out of there. Everybody walks out of there with at least a uh, first draft or a short film. Not for first draft, a first oh, act okay. or a short film. We had to write two, and I didn't think it was enough. Like that class was so slow. Yeah, you know that's that's the thing though is that you you look at the uh, wait two short films or two full length films. No, no two two short films like like we're talking like one act films. When I I was taking some maybe uh, two I forgot I mean it's been it's been several years now but I was taking some pretty heavy literature courses at the time so I, I was okay with the small amount of writing but I couldn't believe that they only wanted uh, an an outline and then a first act but anyway yeah. Uh, thanks for that question. Uh, Robbie the Sky, I want to make a superhero webcomic strip similar to Calvin and Hobbes, but I'm not sure how to write comic strips. I considered writing it as a short story or graphic novel and then breaking it up into much smaller parts. Is writing short stories a good way to approach my comic strip? If you're talking about the Calvin and Hobbes sort of thing, and I mean, I've not read a lot of, a lot of that, but I mean, a lot of humorous comic strips are kind of like 
one and done gags where you have like where you have like a, a, a few panels uh, that get to a punchline and there might be like callbacks and references and sort of a, 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 a vague continuity but for, for the most part there's not an ongoing story if you want to tell if you want to do a web comic and you want to tell a more dramatic narrative or even a, a comedic one but it's, it's ongoing and maybe you get to a punchline at the end but there's actually a story that continues uh, yeah that's a great way to go sure um, in fact most web comics are done that way. I mean, if I were you, I would have a, an overarching idea of what I wanted to achieve with each thing, and then see if you can break it down into sections that would make good strips, because uh, I think the problem with uh, uh, serialized strips is that if you only have this much and it only comes out every three weeks, I mean... Uh, it, it can your pacing can be dramatically slow and uh, people can start to forget what happens between them but his notion of writing it all down first and then breaking it up is is a great idea I, I, I can't I can't think of any reason not to do it that way because all that is a serialized fiction uh, that's that's just like it's not exactly the same thing, but it, it, it's it's kind of like uh, you know serialized fiction that we got in magazines in like the '40s, right? Where like where like every month a different chapter would come up, but then if you put the whole thing together, you'd have a novella or you'd have a novel. Um, and some of those guys maybe had it all written already, and then they just put it out uh, at a chunk at a time. Or some of those guys might have been writing it as they went along. There 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 there's there, there's virtue to both of those things. There's, there, you know, you know, there's reasons to do that both ways. But yeah, if you want to write your whole thing out first and then put it out in chunks, um, sure. I mean, like, like I wrote, you know, my novel, um, the Girl of Seven First Names. I wrote that actually as short stories that all took place in the same universe first, or at least initially, and then. It, it, it turned into a novel. So all these things kind of morph and turn into different things. Like, like, you just have to let it become what it makes the most sense as, as you're going along. Um, but if I will say, if you write it as prose first and you want to turn it into a comic strip or a comic book or whatever, just make sure that it is something that makes sense as a visual medium. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, some people have a knack for uh, the written word, I mean, uh, prose, uh, and some people have a knack for dialogue, and uh, these two things can't exist in the same area. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, for sure. Uh, and uh, what is it that you've always said about uh, about writing prose? Like, it, it's good to be able to write prose because it does improve your script. Well, it does everything. Um, you know, it, it forces you to think visually uh, because you have something so that somebody's imagination can can you know you know do, fill in and do the rest of that work to know just how much you've got to describe is it can be a very difficult sort of thing right but the thing about it is prose has everything built in when you're doing a script uh, or even even um, you know a, a, a comic strip where where somebody else is doing the drawing I don't know what you're gonna do but but if but like you know when you're just writing like a, like a teleplay or a, or, a, or a film script or whatever um, all you really have to concern yourself with potentially is the dialogue, but that's not true either, yeah. is it? Right? Because um, if you're I'm not only saying you have to write everything that the director is going to put you. You don't want to do that, but you do have to consider it because movies are not just dialogue driven. There, it's a visual. Me, you have to think about that stuff. And so, yeah, that's why. But that's what I love about trying to get people to write prose first because it makes you flex all of those muscles. You know, why? Why is your character there? What are they doing? Why are they doing it there? And you know, you. You put a character in a place, not because you have made this choice, but because your character has made these That's choices right. that lead them to this area. So otherwise, you end up with something kind of like Smallville with talking heads. So, yeah. So indeed. This time, that was not my Smallville pot shot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, Russian Dragon. This is one topic, so please excuse all the questions. With customized 3D printed action figures available to the average customer, do you believe we'll see more fan-made action figures in the future? Almost certainly. Uh, how do you believe this technology will change the environment? Will it be an improvement in quality? And will we be overrun with cheap copies of character statutes, uh, statues and novelties? Um, note, there's a lot of batarangs on the Thingverse website. Okay, um, so... Uh, I guess I guess the answer to that is yeah it's like everything it's like, it's like all of these different technologies changing things right it's like it's 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 like how we've got more shows uh, going to streaming and it's like how we've got more movies uh, like 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 at the, at the, that you can watch on demand at the same time as they're in movie theaters and it's like we've got uh, uh, digital comic books at the same time as you can get print 
technology is changing every industry and action figures are no different now and uh, it, now we've got with, with 3D printing and that's going to get cheaper and cheaper as it goes along it's going to be easier than it ever has been before to make your own which is precisely the same as everything else right now um, everything else is easier to make by yourself than it ever used to be. Even video games are easier to make by yourself than they ever used to be. So, um, so yeah, I mean, like, yeah, it's gonna change. It's gonna change the market, right? It's gonna, it's, it's gonna change the whole industry. Uh, will it, will it collapse companies? What will it, what will it do? I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. That's that's a really tough question. I was. It's like, a good question. I hadn't thought about it. Thanks for asking it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't necessarily think that it'll make quality better for the figures because uh, if it's if it's easier to make a good looking figure on your own, uh, that seems more like it would be a problem for the companies, and I feel like they would probably draw, drive quality down because I don't think they're going to be willing to drive, drop the price in order to save money. So. Yeah, well, I don't know anything about 3D printing. Um, I don't know how easy it's going to be for things to be quality made. I don't know how much talent you're going to have to have as an artist to make the thing work right. You know what I mean? Uh, to, to, to have the kind of articulation it needs to have uh, in order to be what you want it to be. All, all of that. So I don't, I don't know how much artistic talent will be involved in making it. In, 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 in making it right. Uh, but if a whole bunch of people are putting out a whole bunch of crap just by themselves, then it seems like that could potentially be good for, um, you know, the people doing it professionally. And, you know, a lot of custom-made things tend to be kind of expect or expensive because yeah. people have to put in the time to create said object. And, and right, but they won't be as expensive as they used to be because they'll be 3D printed, so they'll be a lot cheaper. Yeah, so they don't have to make it by hand. Yeah. But, yeah. And also because they, have, they, don't, they don't have to go out and um, buy at retail price other things to... F to change and mold and stuff. Now, I love that stuff. It's really creative. Um, but, you know, when you can just get the raw materials and do it from scratch, it's a lot cheaper. Well, I mean, sometimes I've seen people create things and then charge a hell of a lot for it because yeah. it's an art piece now because it's not just a custom-made figure. It's this is something designed by me. But when everybody in your it. basement can do it, they won't be able to charge as much, right? I mean, because it's like that with everything else, you know? And it, that's funny to me. Like, something you could potentially mass-produce, they're charging so much because it's an art piece. Uh, I do think you're right. I mean, I'm, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying, like, the current market right now, there, people we're not doing there weird yet. things. We're not there yet. We don't all have 3D printers in our house. Someday we will. Someday that will probably happen. People selling action figure blueprints and then just sending them to you. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm just saying, it's. I mean, the only way I can answer that question is, it's going to be interesting to see. It's all, it's all changing, yeah. I mean, I can't predict that. Yeah. Um, good question. Alex Rolf, do superheroes work better as a cartoon rather than in live action? Great question. If so, do you think more studios slash companies should be pushing for more animated properties at this time? My answer is very simple. It just depends on the kind of story you want to tell. Yeah. And uh, I think that if you have a lot of money, you can throw at something. It doesn't matter. But uh, I do think that you should be able to create a sophisticated animated piece. And yeah. uh, it doesn't have to be like the preliminary run to see if there's any interest out there for a live action piece. And also, you can make a sophisticated animated piece, uh, like Cowboy Bebop, the animated movies, pretty good. And then there was all that buzz about it becoming a live action movie. Why can't we just accept things as they are? Like why, why do we have to have? Like why is it that legitimacy comes from being like that? I know, and I and I'll never understand that. The the big well, I sort of get it, but I don't. I don't agree with it. You know what I mean? Like 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 I don't. I don't have that. Um, but you're right. Legitimacy does come from 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 live action, and uh, people are automatically more interested. Just just on the whole, just the masses, um, automatically more interested in something when finally it gets it gets the live action adaptation. No matter how dumbed down it is, no matter how least common denominator it is for it is for a popcorn eating audience. Um, that's really unfortunate. You know what I mean? Uh, you know that's that kind of thing has always really bothered me. And so you can make, and we've talked about this um, at length. You can make really sophisticated animated things and they don't get the they, they don't garner the interest simply because it's moving pictures instead of people and it doesn't the story should matter the script should matter what what's 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 there the meat of it should matter more than in some ways should matter more than the genre right and not, not not the genre but the medium um, you know I mean and, and we talk a lot about different things are are, are, are better in different mediums um, uh, when you adapt something from one medium into another medium it's automatically 
different. It's that 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 changes it in some way. So it's like I look at mediums a lot, and I find the 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 artistic ness of different mediums versus other ones really interesting. But at the end of the day, no matter whether it's drawn or or written down just in prose or what it is. Is it a good story? Did I do I care about these characters? Does it make me think about anything? What's it about? You know, all that all that stuff still matters. So, um, no, I'm not going to say that. Just so to answer the question, I'm because I'm you just got me on my tirade about that. <laughs> um, uh, legitimacy. I mean, like. Ugh. Anyway, uh, but but like but like when you when you when you look at animation versus live action for superhero stuff, I think it kind of depends on what you're adapting. You know, like 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 I think I think certain things probably adapt. And, and when you said like it just kind of depends on how much money you can throw at it. I agree and I don't agree because there's some things that no matter how much money you put into it, it's still going to look better drawn than it does in uh, adapted to more drawing than it does in live action, right? Like, I think people tend to love that theater of attractions. They want that spectacle. And if it's an animated spectacle, especially since they try to do the, like, the cheapest thing they can for the animated spectacles, which fair enough, I understand, but... Uh, uh, you you tend to not have a very artistic, like a visually artistic, interesting looking movie. You tend to just have an animated movie. Like you're trying to adapt real life into this particular. But we're animation. talking about stuff that's drawn in the first place. We're talking about superheroes. When yeah. some things don't translate to live action very well, you know, you can't make the live action Powerpuff Girls movie. I you can't do that. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. I mean, there are some things that that like are already stylistic. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how much money you throw at it. You it, it can't be so. Anyway, I just think it kind of depends on what it is. Um, like for instance, uh, Dark Knight Returns. Everybody wants to eventually finally see the standalone live action Dark Knight Returns movie. I don't know that you're going to get anything better than. The animated movie, um, it's really good. I don't know. I, I like like I don't know that that needs to happen. Now, if it does and it's awesome, then that's great. But I'm just saying, like, what is it about having real people do something that was super stylistic and in drawing is so appealing to people? You know, I feel like if you were to make a Dark Knight Returns movie, you would come up with something that looks kind of like a Scanner Darkly, only different. Yeah, so. <laughs> that, that's cool. I mean, it would be a really interesting experience, you know? And, I mean, you know, experiment. Um, I was glad we got live-action Watchmen just because I was curious to see what it would look like, you know? Yeah. But, you know, you look at those things and they're they're trying to create something. Uh, Gibbons, whatever the guy's name yeah, is. Gibbons, was, yeah, Gibbons. Was trying to create something that looks in some way photo photorealistic, which is uh, kind of a comic book trait that's been going on for years and years, Good is point. that uh, they try to create something that would convince you that this could be real. So Because uh, they want to be a movie inside of a comic book. That's... And I mean, you go back far enough. Uh, there, there are a lot of things that are similar between the movie serial, movie serials, and uh, comic strips and comic books. They, they all kind of look the same. So, uh, the one's trying to echo life, and the other one's trying to represent life. I mean, if that makes any sense. You know why the live action legitimacy thing drives me so crazy? Because there's so much CGI in a lot of these things yeah. now that they don't look real anyway. I, so, like, what is it that just the fact that we put a couple of people in it makes it more legitimate when, like, 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 you know, forty percent of your movie looks like it looks like a cartoon anyway? You know, there there are certain things that I would like to see live action. Why? Because I think they could do it. Like, uh, I wouldn't mind seeing a live action preacher TV series on HBO or Showtime or something. That'd be great. Oh yeah, uh, sure. I would not want to see a live action Sandman movie or TV show, I'd want to see a really stylistic, interesting, animated... Because uh, if you did it too much of it would have to be animated anyway. Yeah. I mean, and you can do really interesting visual styles. I mean, there's the amazing screw on head. I was just about to bring that up. There are things of that kind that exist, yep. and, and they can bring different styles to life. Like, for example, The Max that was on uh, on MTV a number of years back. These, these things all kind of look interesting. That's all I'm saying. We don't have to do the traditional TAS. <laughs> Uh, that was a good question. Thanks for that. Um, I, I got I got stuck on my soapbox about the. How dare you bring that up again? Um, <laughs> Ma Malzra. No, you're just regular events. Oh, okay. Malzra Erwin, how do you feel about? How do you feel about art shifts? Within the same continuity, i.e., I, uh, Batman animated series to new Batman Superman Adventures episodes and things like that. Um, oh. When we're We'll get to the animation thing in a, in, in a minute. When you're talking about art, when you're talking about art shifts inside of a story in comic books, that can sometimes drive me insane. Yeah, that, that drives me. Yeah, especially that. if it's a trade, like uh, it's just really jarring sometimes. And I found that it's it's starting to happen more in the indie stuff that I read. Is it really? Okay. And I'll, I'll flip through. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Who's drawing this guy? 
What's going on with this? It's my biggest complaint going back to No Man's Land because because even though that's a lot of different writers, a uh, pretty cohesive thing overall. And then inside of it, you just got all of these different artists, and they all have entirely different styles. Some of it looks pretty cartoony, and some of it looks a lot more kind of gothic stylized, and some of it looks more I don't want to say photorealistic, but more realistic. And I'm just like ah, you know what I mean? Like at least have everybody sort of pick a style. They don't have to m mimic each other, yeah. but just go okay. We're gonna we're gonna do this in the style of this. Go, you know. And you know, if there were a clear cut story arc finished and they switched to a new artist, even That's if it's different. the same writer, I wouldn't care. That's different. But, but right in the uh, middle of it. it, you know, especially when there is a collected trade of something, and then they switch artists in the middle, and they go to a significantly different style. I mean, you go back to the '60s, and you have. Uh, you have Spider-Man where they say, hey, Ramida, can you be Ditko-ish for a while? Yeah. <laughs> Until, like, we get people more. And he says, sure, and then he does something that's Ditko-ish. I mean, Ditko-y, well, you, you, you look at Capullo, uh, drawn Spawn, and he was doing a Todd McFarlane forever. And, I mean, like, like, like eventually he kind of carved out his own style and we didn't think about it like McFarlane anymore. But then now you read his Batman and you can still tell it's kind of the same artist, but he's got his own he's got his own style now, you know? It's 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 not Capullo, he's McFarlane anymore. Um, and like I said, I, I do think that evolved. I don't think it was that exactly later on. But, but you see what I'm saying. And uh, as for animated series... When I when I see they they change their art style, I kind of think that it's probably going to die soon. So. Well, it doesn't happen very often. Um, yeah. With with that, it was, and I don't even think that was a matter of dying. I think that was we want to do one more hurrah. Like like mm. uh, like a lot of the time, cartoon shows aren't really meant to go on forever. You know, it seems like because because you know we look at cartoon shows sometimes. Um, I think I think um, unrealistically like live action shows where we go, oh man, that only got two seasons or that only got one season. Uh, a lot of a lot of animated shows like don't really need more than that, you know. It's it's like we put out we shelled out a certain number of episodes to fill up, uh, like like uh, to to like fill a particular spot on Fox Kids or whatever, like you know every day for a certain amount of time. You know what I mean? Where where it's like we, we can show it on syndication. We made this many episodes. Um, now, now you do get things where. They got three. They would have liked to have gotten four, but like three is a really good run for most cartoon shows. So, so um, I don't know. With with uh, here's the thing with with uh, with specifically that example because I can't really think of anything else. I can't think of another I mean, of another show where I suddenly like, got a different art style. I feel like the art styles tend to refine depending on how long they how long they run. Like when you go back to early Simpsons, it kind of looks like it was done with a paint roller and a toothbrush. Right. So, uh, and nowadays it's it's very refined looking. I mean, uh, uh, to a lesser a extent, so this family a guy. sudden like change though. Right, like yeah, I mean, people. They, that's evolution. Yeah, and then the art style changes not because uh, you have a different creative team, but rather because they start to adapt and then they progressively become something. Yeah, but that's just over time. Like what he's talking about is just when it suddenly happens. What do you think of it? Well, with and again, I can't think of another example when that's happened. Which just suddenly, oh, we're gonna go with this entirely different style now. We changed our show. It's not what it was. With with uh, with T A with Batman T A S, it was. Uh, we had three seasons of this particular style, and now Warner Brothers wants to cater to children, and cater a lot more to that. And and like now we got to have the kid sidekicks, and uh, we've like got to make Teen it Titans look versus Teen Titans a go. little bit lighter, and and, and all of that kind of thing. Um, and I don't know. I, the The good thing about that is it was a different show. Yeah. It, I mean, in some ways, it was the same show, but it, it, the flavor was different. It, they wrote it. They wrote it sometimes. A little bit. It was a different show. I suppose, so, and it's Batman the Animated Series as opposed to the New Adventures of Batman. And, and, yeah, exactly. They, they, they even kind of changed the title, although they couldn't decide what the title was during season three because uh, sometimes it was like it was like it turned into the uh, either New Adventures or Adventures of Batman and Robin at some point in the in the in the title, but then we don't think about it that way. So um, they were already playing with titles, but I don't know. So I'm just saying, like the whole season four thing, um, I I see it as just like. It's set farther in the future. It's kind of a different thing. Um, I don't know. I, I don't I don't mind it so much anymore. There's some there's some decent episodes in there, um, and we got three seasons of three really good seasons of that show. And, and frankly, season three there was there were some places where it did start to wane a little bit. Um, in my opinion, there's just there, there there's, there's some episodes where it seemed like they were kind of out of ideas here and there, and um, maybe they they could maybe they should have taken a break and come back to it. But yeah. I would, I would. I would be in all support of that. You mean take a season off, try something different. Why, why do we never do that? I mean, like it's like it hardly ever happens. It's like people think it they're going to completely forget. Not yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, I'll I'll go back 
I'll, I'll watch it. You know what? I'll go back and I'll finish Breaking Bad. Why not? I did. I already did. Netflix so. is proving <laughs> the validity of this, right? By resurrecting dead shows. They've done it a lot now. There are several shows that Netflix has brought back for like another season uh, that that um, that that were gone and and had been off the air for like a year or maybe just went off the air and and um, Netflix renewed it instead of somebody else. And um, they're showing that if people really like a show, they'll come back to it even if it's been a year or two. And I think that's awesome. I would I would watch the further adventures of Firefly. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and also, um, I think another thing that's sort of interesting about about that too is that when they bring back uh, shows on Netflix, a lot of the time it's stuff I've never heard of. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm like, wait, wait, that was a thing. It'll be like Netflix original. I'm like, oh cool, it's this new show. I've never heard of it. Four seasons. How did I have four seasons? So anyway, fair enough. Well, uh, that's it for us today. Uh, thanks, everybody, as always, for watching. We should appreciate it. We're going to come back with you again next week with another uh, exciting chapter of the fourth annual multi-topic extravaganza. If you'd like to ask further questions, um, feel free to. We're not going to promise that we're going to get in that, that we're going to get to uh, to everything past the next video. We're going to do at least one or two more, um, and then we may call it quits from there and save questions and come back next year and do some more. Um, and we, we, of course, definitely will be coming back next year and do some more. But if you want to ask things just in case we get to them, uh, feel free to send us a personal message on Devolution, or you can click the link in the description, which has the original announcement video, and that's where I am keeping track of all the questions. Uh, thanks for watching. We appreciate you. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince. 